the fontanelle that is depressed when the baby is dehydrated so when it is dehydrated obviously the fontanelle which is not having any bony part can get depressed so now here the answer would be anterior fontanelle so there is anterior fontanelle posterior fontanelle mastoid fontanelle sphenoid fontanelle these fontanelles are also called soft spots the anterior fontanelle is present in the region where the frontal bone meets with the parietal bone it is the diamond shaped small gap in the skull bone and you know that the bones are nothing but the membranous ossified bones the cranial bones are formed by membranous ossification and later on they fuse to leave behind some sutures now this diamond shaped fontanelle is a gap between the frontal bone and the parietal bone and with age that is about 18 to 24 months when the baby turns this age it will completely close and this gap is closed and only a landmark is left and that is known as brachma so this answer would be anterior fontanelle and this is an important landmark to know whether the baby is dehydrated when it is depressed you can consider that the baby is dehydrated that is it lacks water in its body and when it is elevated you can say that the intracranial pressure from the cerebrospinal fluid is high so it is elevated traumatic blow on squamous part of the temporal bone so temporal bone is present on the normal lateralis and traumatic blow to the squamous part that is very thin portion of the temporal bone can result in a collection of blood that is epidural hematoma epidural means outside the dura mater so why am i saying epidural hematoma why not subdural because the blood vessel that is present in this region is the middle meningeal vessels the meningeal vessels supply the meninges and they are present outside the dura mater and you can see that there is an anterior branch which crosses this terion and the damage to the anterior branch can result in epidural hematoma so that's why the terion is an important landmark and any damage to this region can cause the hematoma in the brain the cartilage which is responsible for the ossification of the mandible like i said the cranial bones and the clavicle they are ossified by a method called the membranous ossification now the mandible has a cartilaginous model that is formed first and then it turns into bone so which is the cartilage that is responsible for the formation of the mandible the answer is the meckel's cartilage the meckel's cartilage is present in the mandible near the body of the mandible and that gives to one half of the mandible the other side also has a meckel meckel's cartilage in the body and that gives to the other half later on both the sides fuse together to form a u-shaped mandible so now this particular thing cartilage belongs to the arch one which is called the mandibular arch the mandibular arch also gives rise to small two os ear ossicles that is incus and malleus elongation of the styloid process is significant in which syndrome the elongation of styloid process so styloid process has a certain length if it is too long then if it is too calcified or too long calcification can happen because of the calcification of the stylohyoid ligament and that can interfere with the structures that is present in the neck and it can compress all those structures and that is known as eagles syndrome so compression of such structures can result in various symptoms in the in the person and that is known as eagles syndrome there is another option here marfan syndrome klein filters and turners what is marfan syndrome marfan syndrome is associated with the connective tissue disorder that is inherited uh, disorder that is of the connective tissue the fibers that support the anchor um, and anchor the different organs of your body uh, organs to other structures in the body 
So similarly, there is another option, claim filter syndrome, that is again another genetic disorder which has an extra X chromosome and that is uh, in layman's term, you can also call them transgenders. There is Turner syndrome, Turner syndrome is a female who lacks one X chromosome. So the answer here for this particular question would be Eagle's syndrome. Hangman's fracture refers to break in which bone? So the name itself indicates hangman is something when a person commits suicide, which is the bone or the, which is the cervical bone that gets broken or fractured. So it has to be C2. C2 has got a small projection called the odontoid process, which articulates with the C1, which is atlas. And the break in the odontoid process is hangman's fracture. So this is how the odontoid process can break in the process of neck getting pulled. McEwen strangle is important landmark in which procedure? Now here the options are mastoidectomy, thyroidectomy, tonsillectomy and appendectomy. So now here massive and strangle is also known as supramiatal triangle. So supramiatal triangle is a small triangle that is present just above the opening of the external auditory meatus. It's a small triangular area that is drawn by drawing a tangent and drawing the line along the ridge you get a small triangle and this triangle acts like a landmark for the surgeons to guide them during mastoidectomy. So mastoidectomy is done whenever the mastoid process gets filled with pus and the pus can get collected in the mastoid process whenever there is a secondary infection from the otitis media or the middle ear infection. So this particular triangle that is supramiatal triangle has to be used as a um, guide to pass the needle through this and into the mastoid process because you want to avoid the damage to the facial nerve which em emerges out from the stylomastoid foramen and also you want to save the structures which are attached to the mastoid process that is sternocleidomastoid and posterior belly of digastric muscle. So if you want to save all these structures, your needle has to be guided in a proper manner through the supramiatal triangle or McEwen's triangle. Mastoid process develops due to the pull of which muscle in the newborn? So in the newborn, the neck has to be moved and the newborn tries to move its neck. So whenever he moves his neck, there is a muscle that is attached to the mastoid process called the sternocleidomastoid. So sternocleidomastoid helps in movement of the neck to the right side and the left side. So pull of this muscle on the mastoid process results in the growth of the mastoid process. So in the infant skull, you cannot identify the mastoid process or it will be very small. That's how you identify that it is a fetal skull. But in case of adult skull, you can see that mastoid process has got a very nice growth. The nodding of the head in up and down arcs are produced by which joint? The joint in the neck you have it is between the occipital bone and the first cervical vertebra that is atlas. So that is called atlanto atlanto-occipital joint. So atlanto-occipital joint helps in nodding your head as in S. So from up to down motion is S. Next C1 and C2 that is atlas and axis have got a joint that is called atlanto-axial joint. Atlanto-axial joint you can move the side to side movement as in no. So the answer nodding up of head in up and down movement that is yes is produced by atlanto occipital joint now there is another option intervertebral intervertebral is between the two vertebrae and what is zygapophyseal joint zygapophyseal joints are the joints that is present 
between the transverse process of the successive vertebrae. So, the vertebra above and below are connected to each other at the transverse process by zygapophyseal joint. So, this explains the nodding of the head in up and down movement. This is the condyles of the occipital bone with the first cervical vertebra that is C1. The carotid tubercle is present on which cervical vertebra? So, carotid tubercle is present where the carotid artery is present. So, it has got something to do with the external and internal carotid artery. So, carotid tubercle is present on the anterior tubercle of C6 vertebra. So, C6 has got anterior tubercle and posterior tubercle like any other cervical vertebra. The anterior tubercle is little bigger compared to any other vertebra and that is known as carotid tubercle. So, this tubercle sometimes can interfere with other structures and that is why it has got a different name. So, that is also called chassinax tubercle. The carotid tubercle is the anterior tubercle of C6 like I said. It is well developed. That is the reason it is called carotid tubercle. But it poses the risk of compression of the structures in the neck that is a common carotid artery and the carotid tubercle it also serves as an important landmark whenever there is this brachial and the cervical blocks that has to be given in the neck. Fracture of the cribriform plate results in what? Cribriform plate transmits what is what we are supposed to think first. Cribriform plate transmits the olfactory nerves. The olfactory nerves are important for the smell. So, the damage to this cribriform plate can damage the nerves that is olfactory nerves and that can result in loss of smell which is also called anosmia. anosmia. So, that can also have one more hamper that is CSF rhinorrhea. CSF draining from the nose is known as the clear liquid CSF can also come out from the nose that is CSF rhinorrhea and anosmia are the two things. So, the answer is both A and B. This is the cribriform plate where you can see the small foramina on either side of crista galli is for the olfactory nerves. There is a small foramen in front and there is a crest that is called frontal crest which gives attachment to the fox cerebri in the that is the fold of dura mater which separates the right and left brain.